Hello everyone and welcome to another Yakuza slash Like a Dragon video. Today we'll be talking about what I expect from the upcoming Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name, and slash or what I hope it will deliver to us. At this point of time, we've had more than just a small look at what the game has to offer with all the trailers that are out, plus what we've seen of the demo that's been available at some events like Gamescom. A lot of you probably know at least roughly what my thoughts on this game are based on what we've seen so far. Let's talk about the revealed story aspect of Gaiden for a bit. We know that some aspects of Kiryu's past are returning with this game, and that includes characters such as Majima, Saijima, Daigo, and Watase. And of course, they also name drop the orphanage for a threat because, of course they would, it's a Kiryu game, someone close to him has to be threatened, it's a tradition at this point. And not even Gaiden saves him from that, that's why you see him ball his eyes out like this. Well, we still don't know why that happens, but this might as well be the reason. Can you imagine being brought back into the fight for countless times and having loved ones threatened countless times as well at this point? This is as good a time as any for him to break down at the thought of that. But yeah, I'm really curious to see where the story goes for Kiryu and what they'll do with the returning characters in this game. They did show the orphanage. Does that mean we'll see Haruka and the kids all grown up? Only time will tell, I suppose. I feel like story-wise, Gaiden will sate the appetite of people who wanted more closure for Kiryu and Six. But it could also do the opposite, where you may have people saying Six should have done all of the closure on its own. Gaiden is a game that 100% could not be possible without Seven or like a dragon happening. Maybe they could have worked around it somehow, but recently a lot of articles popped up revealing that Kiryu was always planned to return ever since Yakuza 6. This certainly makes things interesting because many thought he was put in 7 purely because fans were not happy about him not being the protagonist anymore. Either way, it's gonna be interesting to see what exactly happens with him during the events of Gaiden and how it'll link to the other games. If I had to guess, this game is gonna end exactly when Kiri is supposed to set off for the events of Yakuza 8. Gameplay-wise, a lot of people seem impressed with what was revealed so far. The two main points of anticipation seem to be the boutique and the arena. The boutique allows you to to customize your outfit like never before. You're able to change many specific pieces individually and mix and match them with a lot of combinations. You could set different tops, bottoms, hats, eyewear, makeup, shoes, and so on. Up until this point, we've mostly had outfits only as part of premium adventure the free roam mode that you're able to play after beating the main story. There are a couple exceptions like Ishin, Lost Paradise, and Koryo 2 allowing you to change your outfit during the main story. But in all those games, those options were much more limited compared to what Gaiden offers. So for many people, the boutique is one of the most anticipated things about the game, especially if it's allowed in the main story, and I sincerely hope that going forward with the series, we'll get something similar in those games as well. The arena is another major aspect of Gaiden that seems to be one of its strongest points. Remember clan creator from 6 and Kiwami 2, the top-down defend the tower kind of minigame where you deploy troops of your own selection. The arena in Gaiden is that, but better in every way as far as we can tell. You don't defend any object as far as we've seen, it's just an all-out fight much like clan creator, except now you finally take control of the fight like normal, instead of it looking like a mobile game. The best part though has to be the fact that you're able to control anyone you bring with you. This is historical. Of course, they'll all have their own movesets, and it should be noted that as far as I've heard, only Kiryu is able to use heat actions. But in my opinion, this is a fantastic start. This is definitely what Clan Creator should have been from the get-go. I'm eagerly looking forward to seeing what this mode has to offer. And also, Segura is here too, so I guess you'll get that playable Segura at last. There's a few other side activities they've briefly shown, like the cabaret and karaoke. But I don't think there is much to say about them in all honesty. There is at least one new karaoke song, so that's awesome. Now for the combat, we have two fighting styles, Agent and Yakuza. Yakuza is the fighting style Kiryu used in 6 and Kiwami 2, but it seems to be enhanced a little bit with some new moves. Most of the gameplay you'll find currently mainly shows the agent style. The agent style seems absolutely bonkers with all the gadgets you're able to use and it looks like it'll make the combat that much more chaotic. Between being able to grab multiple enemies with wires and swing them around, and being able to use your rocket shoes to traverse around your enemies. This style looks unlike anything we've seen so far, and it definitely looks like something I'll enjoy using a lot. I'll say this now just to get it out of the way, but I don't expect for there to be a third style, unlockable or DLC. But hey, we'll see. This game was said to be slightly longer than the Kaito Files, but it looks much more packed than that in terms of content. Now honestly, I think the Kaito Files was a little overpriced considering it barely had any side content for you to do at the price tag of $30. It also didn't help that it doesn't have any kind of new game plus option in case you wanted to go back to it without having to unlock 
every ability again, which was kind of a hassle compared to the average Yakuza experience, requiring you to visit specific spots at specific points of the story. My first playthrough of the Kaito Files took about 10 hours, and it's really hard to say now, but let's say Gaiden story is about 12 hours. And then there's all the side content and hopefully some replay-friendly options like New Game Plus. I think I may be able to get behind the $50 price tag, more than the Kaito Files price. It is worth mentioning as well that in some places you'll find this game cheaper than $50. Play Asia sells the game physically for just about $40, but again, it's still too early to say, I'll just have to wait and see if I think this game's price is better suited. Honestly, outside of the content we've seen so far, I don't know what more I expect to see. But let's talk about something like sub-stories. If there is like, say, 40-ish, give or take, I think I'm okay with that. And of course, having Amon return after finishing those would be awesome, especially with Kiri having all these gadgets now. That fight could be insane. But sub-stories aside, I do hope that there's at least a couple other mini-games that are fun to go back to, whether it's new or returning. The arena on its own seems like it'll be a decent time sink for sure, but another thing or two would definitely help the game's case. So, overall, I think Gaiden's looking like it'll be a fun time. I've said this before, and I'll say it again, making a game like Gaiden after 7 is a great move, a genius move, because for better or worse, they're doing what they can to make sure that people who did not enjoy the turn-based combat have something to enjoy with another entry. A lot of what they're doing with this game seems to be hitting just right for a lot of people, and we can only hope it'll deliver. Of course, it's too early to make a full judgment because it's not out yet, but I do kind of want to mention this general tidbit where it's kind of an advice slash conversation about upcoming games. Whenever you go into the hype of new games being announced, it's always without a doubt a good idea to keep expectations within check, right? If you expect too much out of a game, you end up being disappointed that so and so wasn't in the game as you would have hoped. So even if a game seems like it's going to be an incredibly fun time, even if it has good precedence, it's a good idea to take the trailers at face value. It's the kind of thing that should go without saying, but you still see people falling into the same hype cycle time and time again, right? Fallout 4 is is one of the earlier examples I recall. So much hype for that game, insane expectations from people. That game came out and guess what? Initial reception was met with a lot of disappointment. I enjoyed it because I don't even know what I was expecting, I just thought it wasn't an entertaining experience. Fast forward, cyberpunk, a lot of promises, years of anticipation, hype was at an all-time high and we all know how that went. These are all AAA developers, mind you. And yes, I know Cyberpunk has recently been fixed, but it took almost three years after launch. Weirdly enough, I did also somewhat enjoy Cyberpunk at launch, probably because I wasn't around for all the hype around certain features that ended up not being in the game. I just kind of went in not knowing what to expect. So the message here is just, even if it's your favorite developer of all time, expect nothing, go in, enjoy what's there, a bonus if you find more than you ever imagined, you'll probably enjoy games way more that way. You may be thinking, okay, you need to set higher standards, you're just telling us to try and enjoy everything. But I think having realistic expectations does not equal enjoying everything. I can enjoy a game and still have gripes with it that I would want to voice. It's not all black and white, it doesn't have to be that I either completely hate a game or I'm in love with it without an in-between, because there's a whole distance between those two. At the end of the video, I'd just like to say thank you for watching. It means a lot to me that you set aside the time to watch my content. Uh, like a Dragon Gaiden is very, very close to release at this point of time, and I cannot wait to see what it'll bring. For those wondering, I will be streaming my first playthrough of this game, and probably beyond that to do side activities and anything that I probably missed on my first playthrough, so any of you can tune in whenever you'd like. As usual, I'd also like to thank all of the Hania members who go the extra mile to support my channel. You guys help me out a lot, and seeing all of you supporting makes me want to do more, so thank you, and I hope you like more videos to come. But that's gonna be it for now, folks. You guys take care, stay safe, and stay healthy. I'll be seeing you next time, whenever that is. Bye-bye now. I know you're still here. You know the drill at this point. Ladies and gents, are you looking for a refreshing companion to your long gaming sessions? Check out Gamersup's energy drink formulas, tailor-made for anyone playing for long hours, boasting zero calories, zero sugar, and plenty of nutrients to help you keep going. They also offer caffeine-free versions for those who prefer that. Use code devilion 7 upon checking out or my link in the description to get 10% off. Thank you for watching.